Welcome, Makeup Marketers, to the fourth session of our Makeup Marketing Online June training. Today we're going to be talking about tracking your Avon stats and finding out uh, which numbers are important to keep track of and why. For those of you who have not been on a call before, my name is Emily Segrin. I have been a rep since January 2008, and I live in Rockford, Illinois with my husband and two children, eight and four. Their names are Josh and Ava. And um, I just love my Avon business. You, you may wonder why I go through this introduction every time. Uh, but there are some new people on the call. And you always want to be marketing yourself as well as your Avon business. So um, think of yourself as a brand and how you can strengthen that brand and market it to other people to attract others to your team. I was awarded the Woman of Enterprise um, this year. I own a licensed Avon Beauty Center that allows me to sell at the President's Council level. And I am now advanced unit leader working my way back up to executive. Um, my online sales so far this year have been 28,600. And I have had 129 first generation um, online appointments for the year so far. So we're going to take a look later at how we can use some of those numbers to look ahead um, and see how we may end up for the entire year. So that's kind of fun to do. My makeup marketing online, um, my goal with the whole idea of it is to teach my team momentum how to build an online business as well as other Avon reps that are out there that want to learn how to market their business online. Oops. Um, we only have one session left for the month of June. If you were unable to catch um, some of the sessions and still were interested in the topic, you can purchase the whole month. Um, go to MakeupMarketingOnline.com slash Avon dash training. Um, and you're, you'll be able to register there. If you register for the whole month of June um, and use code ALL5, it will take off $5 for you um, since you've already paid for this session. That way you'll get the recordings for all of the sessions we have done in June so far. We do have our July series up already. It's going to be the same day and time each week, Monday night at 5 to 6.30 Central. Um, as always, you'll receive the recordings for the training um, by the Wednesday, the week of the training. So even if you can't be on the live call, you will receive access to the trainings. Our topics in July are going to be tips on how to sell more Avon online, how to automate your Avon marketing, how to convert Avon website visitors into online buyers, and how to recruit Avon representatives online. So you can either pay $5 each um, for whichever classes interest you the most, or you can do 15 for the whole month. Um, and there is a small Eventbrite fee on top of that. So for our agenda today, we're going to be talking about why stats are important which numbers you should be tracking, how to find direct delivery earnings on your Avon.com, a look at some of the website stats you can track in Google Analytics, and then also our blog stats, how to use stats to set goals and view progress, and then we're going to go through our question and answer session. And this is just kind of a fun uh, quote about uh, keeping track of where you're going and, and uh, where you want to end up. So from Alice in Wonderland, we have Cheshire the cat here. If you don't know where you want to go, then it doesn't matter which path you take. So that kind of tells you um, if you don't really have an end goal in mind, um, you're just going to make blind decisions that are going to end you up somewhere unless, instead of planning out where you want to be and determining how you're going to get there. So um, an end goal 
is helpful to have. Um, set goals for yourself each campaign, each month, each year. Um, always be performing better than you did the previous year. And here's another fun quote. A good plan is like a road map. It shows the final destination and usually the best way to get there. Um, so if you were headed out on a, on a trip and um, you were driving, you're not going to say, uh, let's just get in the car and drive and wherever we end up will be just fine. Um, you're going to plan out your trip, where you want to be, um, by the time you're done driving and you're going to figure out how to get there. So that's what you want to do with your Avon business too. Um, set end goals and then figure out what steps you're going to take to make it to those end goals. Whoops, I went too fast again. Um, so why are stats important? They give you numbers to track and increase over. They show you whether or not you are improving over your own performance. Um, so if you don't keep track of them on paper, you might feel like you're doing better than the previous year, but maybe in reality you're down $2,000 from your sales uh, where they were last year at the time. So you really want to have um, concrete numbers to track your performance and make sure that you're doing better um, each time and taking steps to grow your business. Uh, they give you an accurate picture of how you are performing and where you will end up for the year. So you can take um, numbers and figure out what percentage you're up or down for the year and then apply that to the total that you ended up last year to get an idea of where you're going to end up overall for the year. So that's kind of fun to do, especially on days where you're uh, not feeling very motivated or kind of down on yourself. Um, you can take a look at how you're performing and hopefully uh, you have an increase and you can take that percentage and see um, the exciting numbers that, are, that could happen by the end of this year. It just gives you a little more motivation to keep going and keep going through your daily grind. So they also tell you whether your efforts are paying off. Um, so whenever I do a marketing campaign or I try a new marketing activity, I keep track of things like how much I spent, um, how much revenue it generated, and how much profit I took in as a result of that activity. Because that tells me if I want to re repeat that activity or not, um, whether it was worth it or um, I should just scratch it and go with a different idea. It helps you decide how to allocate your time. Um, so you can take a look at your website stats and see where you're getting the most traffic and why, and that might help you alter your schedule, your, your time commitments, and prioritize what's more important than something else. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so no one is going to track them for you. Yes, Avon does keep track of our numbers in youravon.com, but usually they only go back a year. So what happens um, after that year is up and you want to look back and see how you did um, in campaign two of 2014, um, well, guess what? Those numbers are gone already. So unless you're keeping track of them yourself, um, you're not going to be able to access those very easily. And then it also builds your credentials. Um, I know I've earned a lot of incentives and trips over the years with Avon, and if I didn't have those down on paper, it would be hard for me to recall uh, you know, the name of an incentive, what I won, um, what I had to do to win it. Um, so that kind of stuff builds up your credentials, your resume. Um, even if you're going to be with Avon for life, it gives you um, some material to draw people into your business. If someone sees that you're successful with Avon, that's going to make them want to join your team. What makes you unique to other Avon leaders? Okay, so which numbers should you track? Um, we have website traffic, which um, I like to track unique visitors, meaning it's only going to count the same person one time, no matter how many pages they visit on your website. Um, so you can use Google Analytics or Stat Counter. And I do have YouTube videos on how to install each of those. Um, so 
go ahead and go on YouTube when you get a chance and look up my videos if you do not yet track your website traffic. Um, there's some really helpful information there, and it may seem kind of boring, but it's um, exciting to me to look at all the data and apply it to my business. Um, how many brochures are you distributing versus sales? So if you bumped up the number of brochures that you ordered, did it pay off? Did you have more in sales? Or were you lazy and you didn't get a chance to pass those extra 10 brochures out? Um, make sure that you uh, take advantage of the money you spend. So if you do decide to buy more brochures, track it and see if your sales go up as a result of buying more brochures. You want to track your online sales. So um, if you have online sales already, some numbers you can track are how many sales during a campaign? So um, did you have 10 people place an online order? Did you have three? Whatever that number is, how many um, orders were there? And then your online sales per campaign. So if you're uh, bumping up your marketing efforts and really trying to get traction and movement on your online sales, is it paying off for you? Um, if your sales are not increasing, you may want to switch it up and try something different. And then there's also average order size. So uh, it's kind of interesting. I find that my online customers tend to spend um, an average of about $40 online. And that is my guess because of the free shipping. So nobody likes to pay for shipping. Um, I especially don't. I know a lot of times I'll bump up my order just so I don't have to pay extra for shipping because I feel like it's a waste of my money. So um, average order size, I do feel the online customer spends a little bit more than our face-to-face -face customers. Um, track your sales compared to the previous year if you've been with Avon for more than a year. And keep track of your profit from online sales. That, of course, is the most important number. I probably um, should have put it at the very top because it's um, no matter how many website visitors you have, um, how many brochures you hand out, how many people you talk to, at the end of the day, it's all about how much money you make, right? You want to make the most money and um, you want the biggest return on your investment if you are uh, investing money into your Avon business. So um, be sure and keep track of your profit. That is most important number to uh, keep track of. Okay, and then um, this is just a graph. You can see um, this is a picture from Stat Counter. Um, I actually installed it all the way back in 2009. So the only year I'm missing is the very first year that I sold Avon. But you can see over time uh, how much you can grow that website traffic. Um, from 2011 to 2012, that is a huge jump. And I think that's when I really started um, blogging and, and getting into blog posts. Here I keep track of my online sales per campaign. Um, and I also keep track of how many catalogs I mailed to see if um, there's a positive correlation between how many catalogs I order and how big my sales are. So I keep track of the, um, the sales per campaign, my online sales per campaign, the catalogs that I mail out through Campaign Mailer, how many do I mail out, and then I keep track of the increase um, over, over the previous year. So um, am I doing better this campaign than I did in 2014 in the same campaign? And here we have a, a look at one of the screens from Google Analytics. Um, this is telling me that the majority of my website traffic from my Avon eStore is coming from my Makeup Marketing online website. Um, so then we can take a look at my blog stats and see where those people are coming from to get a true idea of where my website traffic is coming from and where I'm most successful in applying my marketing efforts. 
Okay, so tracking numbers again, you want to make sure you're tracking your personal sales numbers. So if you don't have online sales yet, um, good numbers to track would be the unique website visitors. Um, don't get frustrated with yourself if you're not getting those online sales yet. Um, just track a different metric. So you always want to be tracking to uh, make sure that you're increasing and doing better than um, you were in a prior period. So for personal sales, pretty similar to online sales, we can track our average per campaign, um, the number of customers we serve, our average order size, um, the total revenue for the for the campaign, and then also total profit, most important number that I have down at the bottom there. <laughs> um, helpful formulas. So ROI stands for return on investment. Um, so like I was saying, if I try out a new marketing activity and I'm going to spend some money on it, I want to make sure that I'm tracking my my results and see if it's worth it or not to see if I want to continue doing that same marketing activity. So for ROI, we take the profit minus our marketing investment, um, and then we take that number and divide it by the marketing investment. So just for an example here, I showed you um, what I spent on Campaign Mailer for um, Campaign 13. And Campaign Mailer, uh, for those of you who don't know, is a brochure mailing service. Um, it actually ends up to be cheaper for me than if I were to mail out catalogs myself. It comes out to be about a dollar a catalog, and that includes uh, the postage, the catalog itself, and um, they do all the work for you. For, so uh, for me, the trade-off between time and money spent is, uh, is great there, and it saves me so much time, and I do get a lot, of, a lot more online sales because I am mailing out that catalog. So on campaign 13, I had a profit of $872 from my online sales, so I subtract the $193 that I spent on Campaign Mailer, and then I take that, which comes to $679, and I divide it by the amount that I spent on Campaign Mailer again, so $193. So I get an answer of 3.5. I multiply that by 100 because it is a percentage, um, and I had a 350% return on marketing investment. So that was definitely well worth it. I invested $193 and I got back three and a half times my money. Okay, so uh, hopefully that is something that will help you um, determine the success of your marketing campaigns. You also can keep track of percent change, um, whether you are increasing or decreasing. So you want to take, um, and here I say current year, but you can also take current um, campaign and then subtract it by the, the campaign right before it. So it's basically just um, one time period versus another time period. So um, in order to figure out where I am this year compared to last year, I would take current year minus previous year, take that number and divide it by the previous year number. So for an example on that one, I can show you my online sales from January to May 2015 versus 2014. Um, I have 24,767 in online sales so far um, through May of 2015. I subtract where I was at through May of 2014, which is 19,348. And then I take that number, which is 5,419, and divide that by um, my, my total from last year where I was, so the 19,348. I come up with 0.28. Again, I want that to be a percentage, so I multiply it by 100, and I see that I'm at a 28% increase over where I was last year. 
So what can I do with that number? I can take it and multiply it by my total online sales for 2014, which was 46,908. I want to multiply it by 1.28 because we want uh, to find out where we could end up with a 28% increase. Um, so we come to a projection of 60,042. So again, you can see how fun that is. At least it's fun to me. Maybe I'm a math nerd. But um, it's kind of fun to take numbers and percentage increase and see where you could end up for the year. So those days where you're just not feeling motivated, just feeling frustrated and not feeling like your work is paying off, um, you can take a look and say, hey, it is. You know, I'm, I'm this much further than I was last year at this time, and this is where it could get me by the end of the year. So this is a picture of my planner. Um, yes, it is a little bit crazy, but I have team members in every RPS schedule. So that's representative processing schedule. Um, and depending on where you live, uh, makes a difference when your order is due. So I like to keep track of um, when orders are due for all of my team because I send out reminders of when they need to place their order. So you can see um, like on May 6th I have campaign 11 RPS 1. So that tells me that RPS 1 has a due date on the 6th to turn in campaign 11. Um, I also keep track in my planner of, um, you can see on every date I have this, uh, the initials SET, um, and the S stands for store for me, for um, what we did in sales at my LABC for the day, and then E stands for um, what I did in e-sales, and then T stands for total. So again, I track on a daily basis um, how we did on our store sales, how I did on the online sales, and uh, what the total was. So then I can take an average and see where I'm going to end up um, for the month. So whether you're tracking how many, um, how many people you're going to talk to or how many people you're going to sign up, how many uh, recruits you want for a campaign, Keep track of it on paper so you have an idea of how you're doing um, for the campaign, for the month, for the quarter, for the year. Um, so the more you track, the, the better hold you're going to have on your business and the better you can plan ahead to make sure that your business is always growing. And then, of course, there are leadership numbers. So we want to track, um, I basically track in a spreadsheet everything that is in Downline Manager when a campaign closes out. So I track personal sales, unit sales, the total of the two, my earnings, number of first generation orders, number of second and third generation orders, the total, how many first generation reps I have, how many second and third generation reps I have. Oops, and then that's a typo. The first, second, and third gen reps should be on the line below that with total reps. Um, I keep track of unit new appointments, um, leadership levels, how many people I have at each leadership level, and then the total amount of people in leadership. So again, just helpful information that you're going to want to keep track of outside of youravon.com so that you have it for your own records. Um, and here you can see in a spreadsheet I keep track of how many personal um, appointments I have. So by each campaign I can tell if I'm doing better than I was the previous year. Okay, and that concludes um, I'm going to save that slide for the end of our presentation. That concludes the first session of um, tracking your Avon stats. So I hope you learned some valuable information, and I will talk to you in the next session. Hey, makeup marketers, welcome to part two of tracking your Avon stats.
In this session, I am going to go over uh, within yourevon.com how you can check your direct delivery earnings, uh, how you can, where you install Google Analytics to track traffic on your e-store, and then we're also going to take a look at our social media center stats and what those numbers mean. So let's go ahead and log in to my account on yourevon.com. This is our welcome screen. If you click on my orders, there is a handy little report down here um, that some people don't know about. So if you go and click on direct delivery earnings, If it pulls up here, uh, you can go back a year to see um, how many online orders you had during a specific month, um, during a specific campaign, if it ever uh, pulls up for us on here. <laughs> so this is somewhere where you can come to make sure that you receive the correct amount co of commission for your orders. Um, so this tells me, uh, how many orders I had on these days, the total of the order amount, the uh, commission that I earned, and then the percentage that I earned. Okay, so that's a handy little chart. And to change the date, um, it used to let you go back really far, but now it is only letting you go back a year's time. So let's say we just want to track from the beginning of January. I set the first calendar to January 1st, and then I want to track through today. So we set that, keep that on June 24th, click Done. And then if we click on this pink button here, it will update for us and show us for the year so far. Okay, so there it is. And it's 69 pages long. Wow. <laughs> so this tells me that I have um, 686 orders so far for the year um, of online orders. Now let's take a look at our e-store. And like I mentioned before, I do have a separate YouTube video that is free how I show you where I show you exactly how to set up Google Analytics. Um, it is a pretty simple process. If we come over to eStore and edit eStore, and then up at the very top here, we click on Advanced Options and Google Analytics. So Avon actually gives you some detailed uh, steps on how to set up Google Analytics and how to, and here is where you enter your tracking code. So I believe it takes about 24 hours once you enter this code to start receiving data. So if you do not have a way to track anything on your website so far, um, I like Google Analytics for how detailed it is. If I want really detailed information, I'll log into here. Um, if I just want a quick glimpse at how I'm doing for uh, the week or the day or the month, I'll look at Stat Counter because that's uh, much easier and uh, much simpler to look at when I want a real quick answer. I don't uh, log into Google Analytics as much, but it is also helpful and it's a great tool to have installed. Um, so I'll close out of that. And let me just show you uh, what the stat counter box looks like. It actually allows you to put a visible counter on your website. Um, you do have to install it on every page that you want to track. So if you have a blog within your Avon eStore, um, you do want to make sure, let me get to the bottom of this article, um, you want to make sure that that counter is installed on every page that you want to track. So what that does not track would be if I was actually inside my eStore and let's say I wanted to pin this new, these new colors of nail polish onto Pinterest. Um, let's 
let's see. I'll just pick a different one. So let's say we're going to pin speed dry. And these are the social media share buttons that you want to use whenever you're sharing a specific product product on social media because that's going to ensure that it's taking people directly back to your website, not just um, Avon.com. So if I were to go in and pin this on my Pinterest site, um, that's going to take someone directly into my e-store. So it's not going to count them on my stat counter. So stat counter isn't uh, a solution to see all of your website visitors, um, but it does give you a good idea of how many are coming to your front page and how many are visiting your website. So if someone clicked right through from my Pinterest page on this product, it would take them directly to this page within my e-store, which is not going to count them as a visitor. So it doesn't include all data, but it does uh, include some helpful, helpful data. Let's go back into our web office now. And I also have a video on how to install that stat counter, um, visible counter as well. So um, again, you can find those on YouTube. They're free videos. Um, while you're there, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you get all the updated videos. So let's click on our social media center here inside the web office. Your Avon.com must be happening today. It's a little bit slower than usual. <laughs> um, but the Social Media Center does give you some helpful stats. Um, it tells you how many times you shared a specific post or video. And it tells you how many visits you had as a result of those shares. So these are my stats so far. Uh, be sure to come in here and visit the Social Media Center at least once a campaign. You can tell whether you've shared something already or not um, down here. Uh, this means I have not shared it yet, so nobody has seen it, obviously. Nobody's visited as a result of my not sharing, <laughs> if that makes sense to you. So I can go back and see um, that I did. I've shared this one multiple times. Um, it only says one because I've actually used uh, an outside program to share the link. So it's not counting that I've shared it more than once, but I know that I have, and that's why I have so many visits. Um, here I've shared this one twice. I've had 20 visits as a result. Um, so how does this information help you? Well, it tells you what types of posts are most popular and which types you want to continue to share. Um, you do want to share a variety, so you want to uh, share everything that's on here, but the ones that are extra popular you may want to share a few times. You can also open this box here and say uh, see view all. So you can get a really quick idea of which ones are the most popular. Here, this one's popular. Um, this time to lash out, the mascara post was popular. And then I can share it right from here. So it's a nice little shortcut that uh, helps me share popular posts. Um, so as you can see, you can keep going down and see um, just at a real quick glance um, how many times you shared each post and how popular it was. So I hope you found this helpful within our uh, YourAvon.com and web office, some fun things that you can do to track your progress. Um, I will talk to you in the next session. Hey there, makeup marketers. Welcome to section three of tra tracking your Avon stats. And now I am going to give you a closer look at Stat Counter, what it looks like once you start tracking your website visitors. Um, so, like I mentioned, I like to track unique visits. Um, page views tells me how many pages were looked at, but unique visits tells me how many visitors. Um, and then returning visits tells me how many people have visited previously that are coming back to check it out.
So um, they're all helpful numbers, but I do like to look at unique visits the most. Um, you can keep track daily. You can check out how you're doing on a weekly basis. Um, you can use this date range here to adjust the time frame. Uh, you can look at it as different types of graphs. So let's go back a little bit further and monthly it looks like it was a popular month in April and may dip down a little bit but that is normal. Um, if we take a look at last year's data, um, same thing looks like we had a, a peak in March and then kind of dropped down a little bit and then went up again <clears throat> um, after December. So let's take a look at um, a yearly basis. This is my makeup marketing website, so I only started tracking it. Um, I'm sorry, I only started the website back in 2013. Um, so that's why it only goes back two years. Um, but you can see uh, just by the bar graph here that in 2015, I am already close to how many visits I had for um, all of 2014, so that's a good sign. <clears throat> um, we can also take a look, I uh, use the drop down menu here, so if you want to keep track of a blog plus um, <clears throat> your e-store, you can do that. So I have multiple websites, so I like to track it all within Stat Counter. Um, so here you can see this is my e-store, um, not as much traffic as Makeup Marketing Online, but um, still quite a difference between the years as it, it has grown. So um, I hope you found this helpful. Again, be sure to look up. Um, you can go straight to my MakeupMarketingOnline.com website. And if you do a search on there for a stat counter, you go up to the box here, you can search my website just like uh, you would on Google, but it's only going to give you results from my website. Um, so here is the article, How to Track Your Avon Website Visitors with Stat Counter. Um, and included the video right inside of the article. So. Um, be sure to check it out. It's a really useful tool um, just to get an idea of your website traffic and whether it's increasing or decreasing. And uh, hopefully you can see big increases over time. So thank you, and I will talk to you in the next. Welcome, Makeup Marketers, to Section 4 of Tracking Your Avon Stats. In this session, we're going to take a look at Google Analytics and a few of my favorite numbers that I like to look at uh, once you're logged in. So again, make sure that you have the Google Analytics uh, tracking code installed on your Avon website before you try to log in and see if you have any data. So again, if you come to MakeupMarketingOnline.com and search for Google Analytics, um, you'll be able to find my article on how to install it. Um, and then again, at the bottom, here's my step-by-step -step instructions, and I believe uh, those are the same ones that Avon gives you. Um, and then here's a video so you can watch um, how to actually set it up and install it. So let's take a look. In order to find it, I usually just do a search for Google Analytics. And it's our first result here. I have already set up my account and I'm already tracking, so I just need to access Google Analytics. And there is um, tons and tons of information on here. So try not to get overwhelmed. I will show you a couple pieces of data that I like to look at. Um, and the rest of it is interesting, but I don't usually uh, use it for anything. So under audience, um, you can go to geography and location. 
And what that does is shows you where your traffic is coming from in the world. So it's pretty interesting. I have traffic um, from all over the world. Unfortunately, only people within the U.S. can buy from me. Um, so while all this is interesting, it doesn't really help me at all. <coughs> So anywhere where you track on Google Analytics, you can come up here in the right-hand corner and uh, adjust your dates. So if you want to take a look at more information, you can make your time span greater. Um, so I just changed it to January 1st through today, uh, yesterday's date. And you can also compare it to a different period. Um, but for now, I'm just going to look at what's gone on for our January, so uh, I'm sorry, for 2015 so far. So if you want to click on the United States, you can see in more detail uh, where your traffic is coming from. And it looks like uh, my number one place that people are visiting from is Texas. Number two, California. Three, Illinois. Four, New York. And five, Florida. Um, so that's kind of interesting because I actually have leaders in Florida, Texas, um, and California. So, the, you know, the reason that I may have a lot of traffic from there is because I've written articles about my leaders in those states. Um, so maybe when people are searching for Avon, Texas, maybe my article about my unit leader in Texas is coming up. So um, you can use information to target certain states where you already have a lot of traffic, um, you know, or you can use it to try and, and build the traffic from areas that are not um, as popular. So I only had nine, I've only had nine visits from North Dakota um, for the year. Maybe they don't like, uh, maybe there's not a lot of people searching for Avon there. Um, but anyways, you can also drill down to see, even by city, um, where most of your traffic is coming from. So it's helpful information for you. And uh, luckily, my number one source is from Rockford, so that's good, because that's where I live. Um, if we just go back and we got a different state, um, we can see within Texas, um, if a lot of my traffic um, is coming from a certain city or not. Um, then you can use that information to build specific blog posts or, um, you know, target the areas that you want to build your business. Um, sorry, I, I don't know if you can hear my cats fighting in the background. <laughs> um, you never know what's going to go on at my house. It's always crazy here even if the kids aren't home. Um, so let's take a look at uh, channels here. This is another piece of information that I really like to look at. So acquisition and all traffic and then under channels. That's going to tell me where my website visitor found me. So how are they, um, which of my marketing are working the best. Um, so the number one source is a referral. Number two is direct. That means they're going right online and typing in my Avon ad address. So my uh, campaign mailer is working and my labels on my books that I hand out are working because 20% of my traffic is people just going straight to my site. Um, referral. That, I believe, means, um, let's see, yep, 80% uh, of my traffic is coming from MakeupMarketingOnline.com. So then what would I do with that information? I would take a look at my blog and see how people are finding my blog because uh, if 80% of my traffic going uh, to my e-store is coming from MakeupMarketingOnline.com, I want to see how they're finding Makeup Marketing Online. Um, so again, those are two pieces of information that I find really helpful. Um, what I recommend is just going through here and looking at all of the different uh, data and finding um, what would be useful for you in making your marketing plans. So you might find something that 
that you like um, that I didn't show you on here. So there's a lot of information. Don't get overwhelmed. Um, if you do, just stick to those two pieces of information that I told you to look up. Um, and I hope that helps you uh, in your marketing efforts going forward. So I will talk to you in the next session. Thank you. Welcome to the fifth part of our Tracking Your Avon Stats training. In this section, I am going to show you some of my blog stats and how I use that information to um, determine what I'm going to write about, how I use it to uh, figure out my priorities and my schedule when I'm spending time on my online marketing. So even uh, if you don't have WordPress, this is what my WordPress, the back end of the blog looks like, where I go in and work and create articles and posts and all that. Um, most blog hosts give you uh, information on your visits and uh, your traffic. So you definitely want to take advantage of that. So even if you can't, even if you don't have WordPress, um, hopefully I'll provide you with some information of how you can use your stats to um, better market your business. So I'm just waiting for the stats to load up here. Um, there's a few things that are really helpful. First of all, uh, top posts and pages. Um, I use this information, and I wanted to take a look at my summaries, not just one day's data, because one day is not going to tell me very much information. Um, this shows me for a whole week, but if I want more information, I'm going to look back at least a year or more. So we can use this information to determine which of our posts are most popular. Um, so we definitely want to continue writing those types of posts. And um, we can see which ones are getting the most traffic. And that helps me decide what order to put them on if I'm listing um, related posts or if I'm listing my my blog post somewhere. So um, here we see for a year's time, uh, this is my home page. The second most popular page is about the Avon brochure. Um, I must have a lot of Avon reps looking at the what's new brochures online. Um, my tips page. So again, this just tells me um, which of my posts are most popular and what I want to continue writing about and um, making sure that I duplicate since it was a uh, popular article. I also would use this information if I was writing, um, I know in the blog training we talked about how there were different types of posts you could write depending on which audience you're trying to appeal to. So if I'm trying to appeal to other Avon reps um, and say I have a page marketing one of my training classes, um, at the bottom of the page I would put different links where they can check out different articles because I don't want to lose I don't want to lose my website visitor. I want to keep you um, excited and reading as much as you can and on my website um, hopefully doing a lot of searching and reading and learning new things. So um, at the bottom of a training article I might put related posts and then I would use this information to decide um, which posts to list and in what order. So I would want to put my most popular articles at the top. So Avon Tips, how to sell Avon online, sell Avon online using Facebook, um, and then I might put five Avon tips for recruiting re representatives online. So you want to uh, prioritize and put in order um, your posts based on their popularity. Okay, so let's go back to the stats. And let's take a look at our referrers. Um, so again, we don't want to just look at one day's data. We want to look over time. And if I look for a year, we can see who our top referral sources are, which is really helpful information. So do you know where your website traffic is coming from? I hope so. <laughs> and if not, you will after 
after today's training. So um, let's take a look at our top five sources. We have uh, search engines, Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and then Twitter. So I might use this information to determine where I want to spend the most time when I'm spending my time online and marketing my Avon business. Um, I know that most of my traffic came from search engines. So in order to figure out a percentage, what you can do is add those top five numbers. So I would add this 115,545, 37,342, 10,615, 2,360, and then 868. I would add those five numbers together um, and let me do that real quick so I can give you a real world example of how to do this. Okay, I should have been typing them as I was reading to you. Okay, so we come with up uh, with a total of 166,730. So then what I would do was take one of these numbers. So let's take my top number, which is the search engines. And I take 115,545, and I divide it by that total we came up with, which was 166,730. And that gives me um, 0.693, which would be 69%. Um, so 69% of my traffic in a year came from the search engine. So I would use that to say I should spend about 70% of my time on writing blogs because that's how people are finding me. So if you go to a search engine like Google, and I do know that I rank pretty well for um, how to sell Avon online, that keyword phrase. So I'm going to type that in for you. And here I am right at the top, um, the first organic result. Hopefully you've heard me talk about that before. The, these up here that say ad or sponsored are paid for. Anything below that that does not have that marking are um, pages that Google finds valuable for that keyword. Um, so that means that all of these people found one of my pages or one of my posts by doing a search online. So I would want to continue building new content um, for my blog because that's where I'm getting the majority of my traffic from. Um, I think some of you have probably heard me talk about how I was wasting a lot of time on Facebook. Facebook is like a big black hole and I swear you can get sucked up in it. <laughs> I'll get on there and I'll start scrolling and I forget why I even got on there in the first place. Um, but I know that the majority of my traffic does not come from Facebook. So I don't want to waste all of my time on there. I try to be very disciplined when I get on during business hours and only use it for work purposes. Um, and then when I have some family time or personal time at night, I'll, I'll look through the posts. And I, I enjoy Facebook, so I like to spend time on there. But um, I don't want to waste my time also. So hopefully that helps you uh, determine how to allocate your time. I know I have a, a video as well on YouTube about how to prioritize and schedule your, um, schedule your time with Avon. So let's take a look back at some of the other stats. And if you want to build both your leadership and your sales business, then you need to spend um, time on both of those efforts. So I try to split up my time um, working on building on sales, uh, trying to recruit new team members, and then providing support for my own team um, and working on the makeup marketing concept. So here's search engine terms. Um, again, you want to look at more than one day to give you an idea of uh, what you're doing well. So 
So this again might tell you what kind of articles you want to write going forward. Um, and for a year's time, I can see that all of my articles on different campaigns are really popular. Um, people search for the Avon catalog, they've found me that way. Um, so again, it's just more helpful information to see what types of posts you want to write going forward. And then at the bottom here, the clicks, that means um, where did people go if they left my website, what did they click on? So um, let's take a look at more data today. And ultimately, if you do a blog, obviously you want them to end up at your Avon eStore. So hopefully, um, okay, so yeah, people are checking out the catalogs. Um, let's add that back up because there's probably a lot of results. Um, so they're going to avon.com, but you can see my rep ID in there. Um, so they are going to my specific website, so that's definitely a good thing. Um, I am referring them to ecgrin.avonrepresentative.com, so that's definitely good. And a lot of people are going to my opportunity page, so that's great. Um, every time I write an article or come up with new content for Makeup Marketing Online, um, if my audience is either potential customers or potential new team members, that's ultimately where I want them to end up, right? You don't want to, um, you wouldn't want to create a website that would uh, go through any sort of transaction. You actually want to point them to your Avon eStore. So I hope you enjoyed this session. Again, if you don't have this exact data, I hope you uh, found some ways to uh, take advantage of your blog stats and uh, help that to make your Avon schedule and prioritize your tasks. So I will talk to you in the next session. Thank you. Hey, Makeup Marketers, welcome to our last training session on tracking your Avon stats. So I'm going to take you into a couple of my spreadsheets. I know you saw some uh, photos in the beginning presentation, but I want to show you uh, my actual spreadsheets and what I, what I keep track of, what I save, um, and how it can help you. So I, I have a separate one for leadership and online sales. Um, I also track my personal, my LABC sales in a separate spreadsheet as well. But I want to take you, um, I want to give you a closer look at my leadership and online sales spreadsheet. So um, here is that information I told you in the presentation that I like to track on leadership. So here we have personal sales, unit sales, total unit sales, earnings, first gen orders, second and third, the total of the two, number of first gen reps, uh, number of second and third gen reps, and then total reps, new appointments for our unit, um, number of unit leaders, number of candidates, and then the total in leadership. So over on the side here, I kind of keep track of uh, specific events that happen. Um, like here I earned a bonus, here um, I went at risk, unfortunately. Uh, but it's just helpful to um, put little notes on the side so that you can see um, like why your paycheck dropped or why it increased. Um, always helpful to have that information. Um, in this spreadsheet I keep track on a yearly basis how I'm doing. Um, so real quick, if you haven't used Excel before, it's a pretty powerful tool. Um, I can take a, a look just by highlighting this column right here and see that um, our total team sales are at 231,615 so far for the year. And I can real quick look at where I was last year. Um, I can take a look where I was three years ago. That'll make me feel really good. <laughs> so um, 
2012, our team sales were at 100,160 through campaign 13, and now they're more than double that. So um, always look at long-term growth when you're having a bad day or feeling frustrated. Um, hopefully your increases and your improvements make you feel better. Um, and then at the bottom here, I keep track of my personal appointments. Um, so I can also see compared to campaign versus campaign how I'm doing or by month over here. Um, someone asked me on the original call how much I, sorry, how much time I spend tracking all of this. And I really don't spend much time. Um, you know, once a campaign closes, I go in and add in these numbers. Uh, and then I update my yearly spreadsheet. And it takes about five minutes after every campaign to update this. And uh, the information and um, the tracking that I am able to do because of this information is well worth it. Um, so you definitely want to keep track of your activity, no matter what it is, if it's just sales or it's leadership or it's both. Um, and then let me give you a look at my online sales spreadsheet. Okay, so pretty much in here, I just keep track on a running basis of all my orders um, online. So in this spreadsheet, I have 2013 over here on the left. I have 2014 um, in the middle, and then 2015 over on the side. So it's kind of fun to look. Um, here you can see, uh, I have it through June 22nd here, and I'm already um, into July for 2014. So that means I have more online sales than I did last year. So that's exciting. I keep track of the date, the amount of the purchase, and the campaign that they um, purchased in. And then I keep track on the side of how many ma uh, catalogs I mailed out through Campaign Mailer. So that helps me determine um, whether it was worth it to spend the money on the catalogs or not. Um, last year, I only sent out catalogs to my customers who had ordered in the past month. Um, this year, I wanted higher sales, so I'm investing more money and sending out to people that have purchased in the uh, last two months. So if you have purchased from me on my website in the past two months, you're going to get a, a catalog from me um, for the next for the following two months. So hopefully uh, that gives them time to make again another purchase and it just keeps them purchasing on my website um, with the catalog that I mail out. And a lot of people ask, uh, why do I mail out a catalog when Avon gives the option on the website? Well, first of all, they do have to add it to their cart. Um, if they don't add it to their cart, they don't get one. Um, so I can see how a lot of people would easily miss that. Second of all, I include a little thank you on their label, and I tell them a coupon code to use for their next shopping trip. So um, that, again, uh, encourages them to go shopping on my website again. So they have a coupon code to use for the next time, and they have received the brochure from me so they can uh, see what's new and what's on sale that they want to stock up on. Um, again, it's another reminder to shop with me. Um, when they place their order on the e-store, I also don't know which catalog they're getting. So um, I have looked at it over time and determined that using Campaign Mailer has added a lot of value to my business. So it is uh, one of the main things that I'm sure to do every single campaign. If we look at my yearly view here, um, I look by month how much uh, I do in online sales, and I can compare it all the way back to 2008. So you can see how over time, um, you know, maybe you've been marketing a lot online, you haven't gotten a sale yet, and you're frustrated and you want to give up. But look at this. In uh, my first year as an Avon rep, I did almost 2,700 in online sales. And now I'm doing almost double that in a month. So um, 
just goes to show you how how if you stay consistent and persistent and stubborn like me, then you can <laughs> see, you can see how far you can get. Um, you know, in the beginning it was pretty slow, and I was really trying hard and not getting really far, and now it's really building. So it's exciting to see that. Um, and then over here, I keep track by campaign of how much I did, how many catalogs I mailed out, and uh, whether I had an increase or decrease over the prior year. All right, so at one time I did make a template for if, uh, uh, if you have Excel and you want to start tracking your numbers. Um, in order to get to that template, you can do a search on my MakeupMarketingOnline.com website. Um, and I titled the article, Are You Making More Money? Uh, with Avon every year. Let's see, are you making more money every year as an Avon representative? So that is the article where you can download the template. Um, so here is the spreadsheet. You can click on that and as long as you have Excel it should pop open for you. Um, and I basically just gave you a template to start with. Um, obviously, you want to delete all of my data, uh, but I do have formulas in the columns, I'm sorry, in the cells that are highlighted yellow. So you want to, um, oh, looks like I'm missing one there, I'll have to fix that. Um, but you want to leave those cells alone because those will automatically calculate for you as you enter data. Um, you can also watch uh, this video, and I kind of go over some of the same information that we went over today, but you might pick up a new tip or two. Um, so I hope you found this helpful. We're going to go back to uh, the presentation here to close it out. Let me skip ahead to that slide we were on. Okay, so here is a quote from Dr. Seuss. It says, congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and 3 quarters percent guaranteed. Kid, you'll move mountains. Oh, the places you'll go. Uh, so it's just a good, fun reminder to um, keep a positive outlook. Plan for your success. Don't just wait for it to come hit you in the face because it probably will never come. <laughs> but if you take the right steps to be successful and you're always improving over yourself, you are going to eventually have a big Avon business. I promise you that. So um, just a good fun reminder of why it's important to keep track of where you're at and where you're going. Um, Again, our last session for June is about Pinterest. It's on June 29th. Um, you can go to MakeupMarketingOnline.com slash Avon dash training to see all of the sessions. You can purchase the recordings. You can also sign up for our July sessions. Um, again, make sure you look me up on Facebook. You can connect with me personally. I also have a page and a group for Makeup Marketing Online um, where I give tips and we talk about as a group how we can build bigger Avon businesses online. Um, thank you very much. Be sure you check out MakeupMarketingOnline.com and I will talk to you in the next session. Have a great day.